Welcome to Inquiry. I'm Daryl McInnes. Our first offering of a new season involves the Ontario election. The political rhetoric blanketing the campaign trail will soon be stripped away, and the hard reality of victory or defeat will set in on September the 6th. Perhaps nowhere else in Ontario is the responsibility of voters being tested more than in London North. Residents of this riding are facing their fourth election in six years. The candidates of London North are with us today. Running for the Conservatives is incumbent Diane Cunningham. Representing the Liberal Party is Steve Buchanan. Running for the New Democratic Party is Carolyn Davies. The Freedom Party candidate is Jack Plant. And the Family Coalition candidate is Bob Manuk. We'll begin our discussion with our guests right after these messages. And welcome back to Inquiry. As we mentioned in the beginning of our program, voter fatigue possibly could be a concern uh, among the voters in London North in this particular election, the fourth in six years. Diane Cunningham, does that concern you as the incumbent in this riding? Well, I think the election, uh, the election being called in the middle of the summer, um, just, uh, you know, halfway through a term is the greatest concern at the door right now. And people are fed up. And for me, the great concern has been that we've we've counted out all the young people that should be involved uh, who we're counting on in the future to be part of our political system and part of the democratic process and so i think they're tired but more frequently they're away they're simply not there okay you're referring obviously to a great many number of students who live in london north uh, perhaps eight all nine months province. out of the year all over the province hopefully they will have registered and still be able to vote elsewhere in their home writings many of them will but uh, many of them will be going away to school okay. and many of the people coming especially into london north from other cities will not be registered to vote let's pick up on the issue of the timing uh, steve buchanan as the liberal candidate in london north are you hearing this at the door in your campaigning a lot that People are concerned and upset, indeed, that Premier Peterson called the election so soon after the last one. Well, I think there's a certain amount of voter apathy anyway because of the whole political process and all of the events that have recently uh, been playing here in Canada. So there's a certain amount of cynicism that's there anyway. But I think uh, to, the, to the largest extent, most people are very interested. Most people want to know. Most people understand the process and they understand that sometimes it's the luck of the draw that in a particular riding there may be a number of elections uh, fairly close together. Except you'd agree that the, the registration, the enumeration is way low. I mean, it's very low. It's been hard to find people well, who I think to do it. Well, I think Diane and I would both agree that uh, during the summertime, it's not only difficult for voters to be able to participate, but running a campaign is very difficult as well. I mean, it's very difficult to get people uh, because of holidays and, and all these various things that keep your time in the right. summer. Carolyn Davies, what are you hearing at the door as you campaign on behalf of the NDP? Well, I'm hearing a very similar kind of story. People are very upset that their summer vacations are being bombarded with literature and things like that, especially when we've had elections so, so recently in the past. I suppose at one level I could say it is in my favor because uh, they've really been very upset with Peterson calling an early election, and so it's been playing in my favor, those who are at home. Jack Plant, what are you well, hearing at the door? Uh, I think a lot of people understand that uh, it's the Premier's prerogative to call the election when he called it, and he called it for a number of reasons because he knows that he has the best opportunity now. I think any chance we get to... Um, change the person that's in office if we don't like them. That's a good chance. Uh, that's a good time to take. But people realize that there really is no choice among the major three parties. Bob Manuk of the Family Coalition Party, let me ask you, should the Premier and should the, uh, who after all has to be re-elected in a writing himself and is uh, first and foremost a politician, should the Premier have that kind of leeway and, and the opportunity to decide whenever he is going to go to the polls? I mean, we're, here we are again, just two years after the last one. Well, I, I believe he'd uh, have a certain leeway, but uh, towards the end of his term, I, you know, it's totally irresponsible to call it at this point, uh, which is, you know, just beyond the midway point of his of this term. Okay, I think you've all touched on that you believe there's a certain amount of apathy out there, difficulty in, in reaching people with holidays, uh, difficulty in it being a summer election. But one thing has already impressed me in the past couple of weeks about this campaign, I know that in the media, we have heard that no one seems to be interested in this election, and I don't think that's uh, true at all. Um, from what we have seen just in recent weeks, uh, in recent days within our own city, demonstrations uh, by many different groups of people who seem to be leading the issues if the politicians the, themselves are not. And I refer to the, the labor movement and uh, even health care workers who in recent uh, days have been protesting. 
um, Diane Cunningham, is that a little different in your view? No, it's very active. Uh, we've had over 40 questionnaires to fill out from groups that have obviously gotten themselves organized. There are other groups that are asking for our opinion so that they could be published in their uh, newspapers. Uh, there are other groups who are actively supporting candidates and parties at the door. And uh, to give you an example, health care workers are very well organized. The teachers are very well organized. People in the environment are very well organized. The home builders in London are organized. They're very upset. And uh, for Mr. Peterson, I think uh, this will probably be the saddest uh, election that he's ever called because they're all angry with him. And it's showing up at meetings, too, because uh, for those of us that have been at the last five meetings, there are very few liberals there. They're all annoyed. And it's because uh, the activity out there is saying, look, let's put our action right where it matters. Uh, let's get our troops organized and by phone or by mail, whatever, let's get the vote out. And it won't be a Peterson vote this time. Steve Buchanan, with what the Premier has done in calling the election at this point so soon after the, the last one, has he created a situation in this province where it has become politics of the vocal minority? Uh, we have already heard that registrations are down, particularly in London North. Uh, it's always been a very prominent and popular writing. It has always carried a high profile, the people that have been sent to Queen's Park out of that particular well, let me writing. let me touch on two things. First of all, just to set the record straight, in Ontario, if you go back in history and you look at when elections have been called in Ontario, you'll see that the average, right back into the 1800s, is actually 34 months in between votes. So this particular time, sitting around the 36-month period, I mean, on average, we're no different than we've been anywhere along. Uh, certainly, he's three-quarters of the way through his current mandate. Peterson's up the average, though, Steve, by calling it, oh. you know, less than three years apart the last two times. So let's face it. No. And, and you know... We were talking, we were talking a hundred years of history. Well, so all I'm stating is a point that 34 months has been the average. He's three-quarters of the way through a traditional mandate. A but, traditional but, mandate in Ontario is four years. Let me touch on the second part of your yeah. question. And that's the vocal part of the, of the question. Last night in front of the Radisson Hotel, I had a great opportunity to talk to many of the demonstrators that were there at a meeting that, uh, that we all attended. And I think it's, it's tremendous that these people are now, all people are starting to participate in the democracy of our country. Look what's happening around the world. People themselves, the average citizen, as never before, are starting to participate in the type of democratic process that they have in their own countries. The kind and of participation we have seen in the last few weeks, does it scare you as the liberal candidate in London? North? I think it's wonderful. I think it's a great thing that people have all kinds of opportunities to express their concerns, express their new ideas, express the way they'd like to see Ontario shape up. I mean, that's what it's supposed to be. It's supposed to be about open discussion. It's supposed to be about but, you know, getting Mike, the point across. Uh, uh, or Steve, I'm sorry, though, at the, those demonstrators who were there, and I was with them, uh, because some of them were for OCA and some of them were with a couple of other issues, were there because they were hoping that Peterson would show up at his own all-candidates meeting. And he wasn't there, and they were very disappointed because they had a lot of angry things to say to him, and he didn't show up. The Premier's heard those angry things. They've been at uh, many, many of the events that the Premier's attended. The Premier was here on Saturday, last this past Saturday, uh, in the city. But we also have to remember that being the Premier of the most important province in Canada has a tremendous amount of responsibility. He has many, many things in his agenda. He has to go and talk to the people throughout the province to make sure the people of the province understand the legitimacy and the importance of this and, particular And he election. was in London yesterday and didn't come to the All Candidates meeting. Well, let me ask Diane Cunningham if you have any sympathy, Diane, for the Premier in that regard, in that he does have to wage a campaign province-wide. You just recently waged a campaign That's within right. your own party. And Mr. Harris is the leader of one of the parties, as, uh, or the, uh, of our party, uh, the Progressive Conservative Party, and Mr. Ray have both been in their own ridings, and they've both participated in meetings. And I think that's the great criticism. It isn't that we would expect him here a lot, but not to come to one all-candidates meeting is inexcusable. I and I really today, believe Mr. Uh, Mr. Harris, I, Mr. Harris was on his was on a debate. He was in an all candidates meeting. My understanding this week, and he was in a debate last evening that was uh, was uh, on on uh, CBC this morning. But the point is this: I also went through a by election, and I have to tell everyone here: all parties were represented in that by election. It was a great experience in democracy because young people around, secondary school students were here, university students were here. All parties had great youth groups working for them. It was a very active election. Yes, there's some demonstrations right now. They're very much anti-Mr. Peterson. They want to meet him. You hit the nail on the head. Those kinds of demonstrations may happen anyway. But the part about getting young people out and getting them involved 
and having public meetings sponsored by teachers, sponsored by health care workers, sponsored by environmentalists. That all happened last time, Mr. and it's Buchanan, not let happening me ask, now. Let me ask you quickly before we take a break here. Is there a message you can give to Mr. Peterson about attending uh, a meeting? Are, are there any more opportunities before the vote? I think Mr. Peterson has fulfilled very strongly his commitment to his riding. He's been here in, in the city of London three times or four times to date. There's still another week left to go in the campaign. Uh, you know, and it depends on what happens over the course of the, the, uh, the campaign. He has to sometimes interrupt his schedule the way he did for Fromm the other night uh, at the, uh, after the tornado. I mean, he has more responsibility. We'll, we'll be back in two minutes' time to pick up our discussion it. with it our guests here on Inquiry. Welcome back to Inquiry. Healthcare, certainly one of the most dominant concerns among Ontarians uh, in, in the 90s now. Uh, we've seen a lot of hospital bed closures. Everybody is very much concerned about the, the state of the healthcare system. And I know that Carolyn Davies, as a nurse practitioner, this is uh, special to you. That's right. It's very special to me because I believe that, that if we don't have good health, everything else around us falls apart. Uh, we are, our health affects everything else we do, and everything we do is, is, is uh, affected by how well we can take things in. So it, it affects us in all ways. How uh, would the, the NDP then change health care policies in this province if uh, Bob Ray was elected uh, Premier? I think that we would take a much more active role in encouraging community-based health care. And I say that at all levels. Uh, we certainly, as, as uh, New Democrats and as, as, a, as registered nurses, both support the concept of salaried physicians and would go much more strongly into community-based uh, health centers where the health care is focused on the community, using acute care settings like hospitals as a, a, a necessary uh, point of entry for, for uh, ill people, but to, to keep people well in the first place and to do a lot more prevention and, and uh, get away from uh, just the focus on curing people, waiting till they get sick to do something, but keeping them well in the first place. All right, I think we have heard from the New Democrats, uh, Liberals and Conservatives on a, on a lot of issues uh, that are uh, uppermost in the minds of probably all the people who will be looking to vote on Thursday, September the 6th. What do we know about the Freedom Party and the Family Coalition parties? Let's talk to these uh, guests now. And What is at the focal point, the heart of your uh, platform? Uh, the heart of our platform is the belief that uh, the purpose of government should be to protect our freedom of choice rather than to restrict it. And something as health care, for example, uh, the government has a monopoly on supplying health care services, uh, on supplying health care insurance. And anything the government runs, recent studies show, run at about 40% efficiency. So for the health care services that we're receiving, we're paying two and a half to three times. If it was privatized, it could possibly run, uh, studies have shown, a 250% improvement in efficiency. So uh, we have, uh, you know, before 1968, there was about 10% uh, of people probably that didn't have health insurance. And instead of taking the money and helping that 10%, we funded a whole system, and people moved into positions in management, uh, the patronage positions, I don't know, where the whole industry is funded, rather than helping the people that need it. And whenever these subjects come up about privatization, the politicians always talk about the poor people, and they use the poor people. Those are not the poor people that are being helped. It's a universal system where the middle class uh, has the most advantage. They gain the most advantage from the funding of the health care system, and it's bankrupting our profits. Well, I'd like to challenge that because we have all kinds of very legitimate studies like the Burlington Ran Randomized Study that indicate that if community health centers were a basis of, of the health care system in, in every town, and I'll, I'll mention there's only one in London, but in most every other part of the country, Hamilton, Toronto, Ottawa, Sault Ste. Marie, they're all over the place, and they are saving the taxpayers millions and millions of dollars. They're community-based, the community identifies the kinds of needs they, they have, the, the government is still a ministry of health. It's a well and alive uh, concept. Uh, give us X number of dollars and we do it on that. And we use all kinds of other health professionals other than physicians. You see, physicians don't, 85 percent of what comes into a family physician's office needs to be dealt, it doesn't have to be dealt with by a physician. Only the medical problems need to be. There's well women, well children, public health nurses for, for centuries, not centuries, but since Florence Nightingale took care of all of those issues. So, so we are talking a much more cost-effective system if we used other health health professionals like the Canada Health Act is prescribing but the Health Disciplines Act isn't carrying through so where so nurses, that point. nurses that do an it. Election, that's an, been an election prob, promise of the Liberal government in the last two campaigns and one of the most important promises because I think they were on the right track was to increase the numbers of integrated homemaker programs across the province to 38 from 16 
And in the last five years, they've gone from 16 to 18 at the same amount of money they said they would spend for 38. Now, I'd like to say that although it's a good concept, there's a reason that it's not working. And the reason is they don't have the support of the frontline workers to do it. They cannot get the job done. There's inefficiency in the system and there's a distrust. And there isn't the kind of communication and cooperation with the health care professionals that can give the best advice to the government. And we experienced that on Monday evening when the nurses had their public meeting. We experience at Queen's Park when we have committee uh, meetings around uh, Bill 147 was the independent health facilities we bill. We have seen a growing number of uh, demonstrations, Steve Buchanan, in regard to the health care system in this province. It has to concern you as a candidate. Well, and it also concerns me as a business individual because in business we approach things from a very logical standpoint. We lay out a strategy and we map out a plan and then we implement the plan. When we inherited the government in 1985, there was absolutely no strategy, no plan in place, and no way of implementing things uh, but thanks Steve, to the Conservatives. We built the hospitals and what, in this city and what we did, what we did was finally start taking a business Nobody approach to things. We started the plan. We, we then started to implement the plan. Carolyn has already anything. talked about some of the good things we have in community based health care. The Premier's Council on Health. One plan very, very long term strategic plan no. planning has taken place. But I don't know. I think I'd rather have the type of health care system we have. Because if it was up to Diane Cunningham and Mike Harris, they'd turn our health cards into credit cards. That's you know what? We would have doesn't to pay have every time we go to the doctor. Steve, I'd it's like uh, I'd like Diane Cunningham really to respond. Diane, the I issue will. here that he has said is we would have user only. I, I assume that's what he's talking about. That's the user fee. Use the the present plan uh, on the integrated on the uh, on the brand new plan for the provincial government in their most recent report they have in fact increased the user fee by hundred and eighty seven million dollars into the system itself over the next five years because there are user fees there is now. No user fee, oh, there are user me. fees for needles. There's I can the give Well, we could be here all day just on the one issue. I'm going to the move it all the way around the half circle here. User fees are part of the system now. Yeah. It's under the table. Nobody should pays be to go to the doctor in this province. Yeah, that's not what we're that's talking true. about. What does the Family Coalition Party stand for? What is it? Family Coalition Party is determined to promote and protect the family, and we recognize the uh, connection between morality and, and quality of life. Uh, we're talking about health issues here. Well, uh, years ago, many of, many of the, uh, the wellness uh, uh, promotion came from our mothers, came from our families. Families were looking after one another. And we're in a, a time now where, where people, when they get a headache, they're, they're turning to the uh, hospitals and their doctors and physicians when, when a lot of this could be cared for in their families. So we just want to promote uh, the healthy aspects of a family and see legislation that's coming in that is having positive impacts on family and not negative impacts, such as raising taxes Remember and Remember that the things. public health yeah. nurse was the one who came into the that's home. Right. And we support and that. that. Was and that was that cut was out. Cut. And 20% yes. of the people in hospital yes. beds today shouldn't be there. It's a sad that's thing. Right. They're bed, bed the, blockers right at St. Joseph's. The two Luckily, candidates, we got St. Uh, Mary's Hospital. Jack Plant from the Freedom Party and Bob Nook of the mm -hmm. Family Coalition Party. Um, you give of your time, yes. a lot of effort, you probably don't have a hope in Hades of getting elected in London North. There probably will not be one Freedom Party candidate or Family Coalition Party candidate elected in the province. Hmm. Why do you do all this? Because people need a new choice. Yeah. All you have to do is look at these three candidates and look at what they're saying. They're not offering a choice. Mm -hmm. They all have uh, various degrees of socialist programs to offer, so offer. Government control this, government control that. People need a choice, I and we're, we're trying to build a choice. I very much in the Conservative Party about the importance wow. of developing a partnership with the private sector. And we're talking about that in health care. We're talking about it in education when we ask for developers and home builders to help us build the schools and the Liberals haven't listened. We're asking for it in roads and infrastructure. Stay and with us. We have, uh, uh, as our candidates continue so to discuss the issues, we'll be back in two minutes' time. Vote. Stay with I us. Bob Manook of the Family Coalition Party, why should the voters of London North vote for you, a candidate who, as we call it, is a parachute candidate living in Petrolia, running in London North? In, in 1988, we had, uh, in the by-election, we had 1,200 voters vote for the Family Coalition Party. Uh, they voted with their conscience for uh, some things that they believed in. And we felt at this time, uh, because there was not a candidate coming forward, that they still had, they should have the alternative to vote according to their conscience. Uh, with, with the things that we are bringing forward to this election with uh, uh, moral concerns and wanting to see moral, uh, morality in, in our governments and our society. Uh, so I came in to fill that spot so they, they would have that alternative, which we believe they, they deserve. All right, Jack Plant of the Freedom Party. Uh, 
I suppose if your party gathers 2% uh, of the vote, it would probably be some kind of a, a victory in London North. Yeah. Why should uh, those people out there vote for you? Well, I can guarantee the voters if they vote for any of these other uh, parties here that they'll get more government control over their lives. And definitely, if they vote for any of the three major parties, I can guarantee that their taxes will go up. Freedom, that's what Freedom Party is fighting against, to get governments off our back and out of our pocket. Enough is enough. It's got to stop somewhere. Carolyn Davies of the New Democratic Party running in London North. Why should voters vote for you? Well, I think it's about time that the voters uh, had a lot of the things that the New Democrats have been standing for all this time. We're concerned that the uh, large corporate uh, developers and uh, uh, other rich are not paying uh, their fair share of taxes, that uh, they should be uh, lessening the burden of the taxpayer. Certainly the large polluters should not be uh, polluting without having to pay for it and, and should be fined heavily if they do so. I think that would also lessen the burden of, of the people. I think the New Democrats really stand for a lot. People know we're the conscience of the people and now they're ready to... I have to, to move on, Carolyn. Steve Buchanan for the Liberal Party in London North. Well, I think people are more and more, as we've talked about, they're concerned about taxes and how their taxes are spent. They're looking towards an individual who has uh, fiscal and financial responsibility. Somebody who, for example, can help spend those tax dollars more wisely. They're also looking for somebody who's not uh, full of hollow rhetoric, but really wants to get some action done, do some work. Anybody who's seen me during the campaign have seen me hustle just the way I do in my business and the way I'll do in Queen's Park. Diane Cunningham of the uh, Progressive Conservative Party. You have four very uh, qualified, competent candidates running against you in London North as the incumbent. Uh, why should uh, people vote for you again? I think they should vote for me because I'm the only one, first of all, that lives in London North. Secondly, That's I've been elected for some 18 yeah. years. Uh, I've also been, uh, I think, very in active in the riding, riding either, and yeah. I've supported them well. I had to run in London North because there were 94 Liberals at Queen's Park, big majority government. We don't need any more Liberals. We couldn't get anything done. I finally got a new secondary school for London. Now on the agenda is an elementary school, three of them for London. We won't get them. The Premier said no, and I have to work hard to do that. And in a small opposition party, I've had a wonderful opportunity to stand up and work for London North. The other thing, the taxpayers are fed up. Too many taxes. Are, we're the only party that has promised to freeze taxes, and we've shown how we can do it. I just want to and quickly ask Carolyn Davies, uh, is it important that a candidate live in the writing that uh, that candidate is well, trying to represent? Well, I, I don't think so. Not in London, when it's that, such a, a, a close-knit town anyway. I live south of the river, but I've always canvassed and know all the voters in London North, and I've always worked in, in the by-election, and I've always worked in London North. I know those voters. I feel good about them. As a nurse, I'm back and forth over the border. I, I have to cross the street. Uh, Inquiry, bringing people and issues together. Join us again next week. Tonight at 7, Paige goes to work for a veterinarian who is excellent with animals, but not so great with people. On Life Goes On, stay tuned now for Parent to Parent, next.